In today's podcast, we are going to discuss the Mercedes team orders. How Ferrari did not have enough pace in Russia. And how Red Bull finished in P5 and P6, including what happened in the midfield. So here we are for the post-2018 Russian Grand Prix podcast. And again, I'm here with Nip Blow. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? All good, and let's just go on to what was actually quite a good Russian Grand Prix and start off with the top teams, and first off, Mercedes getting a 1-2. They were dominant this weekend in Sochi, and I have to say, in terms of pace, I think the Mercedes car right now is the fastest in F1. They have reclaimed that title, but the big controversy was the team orders between Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas, with Bottas letting Lewis through. Now, again, I've said this before and I'll say this again. In my opinion, it was absolutely correct to do that because if by some miracle Vettel wins the title by six points and they didn't order to let or didn't order Bottas to let Lewis through, then it would be an idiotic decision. As Toto Wolf went on to say that he would rather be a baddie for what he did you know, on Sunday for an idiot at the end of the season. And he's absolutely correct in that assessment. Nib, do you think when it comes to the team orders that they were right or do you disagree? Well, we'll start off with Mercedes this weekend. Wow, what a performance since Singapore. I think it's fair to say that they definitely have the fastest car once again, especially in the last sector. They're three to four tenths quicker than Ferrari in the last sector, which was... Ferrari's strong point last year when they come to this circuit. A great performance by them all weekend and a deserved one too. But on to the team orders. I completely agree with it. I don't like it, but I completely agree with it. It's like time wasting in football. It's something that nobody likes, but it's it's a part of the sport. And at the end of the day, it was the right decision to make. It's given now Hamilton a 50-point lead in the championship. That's two race DNFs, and they'll be equal on points. Like That's a very, very strong position to go in the last five races with. And the way it's going, the championship should be over by Mexico. And Mercedes had to do this just to give them that that little bit of an extra buffer. They didn't particularly, honestly, need it that much. But I understand Toto Wolff's and Mercedes' decision to switch them around. I did feel very sorry for Valtteri Bottas. He had he had a great weekend, as he usually does around Russia, and as I predicted, I must say. Um, but I think a bit of credit has to go to Hamilton here. He showed like what a good guy he was after after winning the race. He wasn't like he wasn't very happy at all. He wasn't his usual happy self after the race weekend after the race win, sorry. So a lot of credit to Hamilton there. Next up is Ferrari, who, in terms of pace, just weren't good enough. They were not as quick as I thought they were going to be in Sochi. I thought they could have got pole position going into the weekend. But after practice two and practice three, it never looked like it was actually going to happen. And in qualifying, they were miles off Mercedes. I will give credit to them, though. In the race, you know, Vettel was good and Ferrari weren't too far off in terms of race pace, in terms of getting ahead of... Uh, Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes, but then Hamilton repassed him at turn four and a great overtake. That was one of the best passes and battles, I think, of 2018. But at the end of the day for Ferrari, they lose out on more points compared to Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton. Nib, what did you think of Ferrari's Russian Grand Prix? Very disappointed by their overall pace this weekend. I thought they would be slower than Mercedes, but not by half a second in qualifying that was a bit of a shock for me but in the race they were definitely a bit closer but at the same time I also think Mercedes weren't really pushing too much because Hamilton was being held up by Verstappen towards the end of the thing end of the race end of the thing um so that was definitely a a contributing factor but they definitely had better race pace than they did qualifying pace as you had mentioned, a great battle between Vettel and Hamilton. We'd been waiting to see like a proper battle like that, and that was that was really really good. I must say, I thought Vettel's uh, defensive move into 
turn two was completely legal. I thought it was just one continuous move across. So I don't think he should have got a penalty at all. Uh, with Kimmy, there was he was kind of nowhere this weekend. He was it was back to last season's Kimmy. He was like absolutely nowhere, but then just randomly he put in some faster slaps and still be nowhere. So a very disappointing weekend for Ferrari, and it almost looks like both the championships could be over for Ferrari after this weekend. Then on to Red Bull, who had basically the best result they could have possibly got out of the Russian Grand Prix because, of course, they started at the back. Max Verstappen was so good in this Russian Grand Prix, flying through the field to get up to P5 in the first eight laps. And then his pace, up until he pitted very late on, was very, very good. He was leading the race, but of course had to pit because you have to take a mandatory pit stop. Um, so good there for Max Verstappen. Daniel Ricciardo, he did have some damage to his front wing that was picked up on the first lap. And because of that, he fell away massively compared to his teammate, but in general wasn't that quick uh, anyway. So I don't think that Daniel was going to be competitive with Max because Ricardo, I thought quite slowly, made his way through the field. But Nib, for Red Bull, do you think a good result or there could have been more? Yeah, definitely a good result for Red Bull, the best they could have hoped for and a lot better than what I think most people thought. In qualifying in Q1, there were only eight tenths off, six tenths off Mercedes and Ferrari. Oh, certainly Mercedes. I'm not sure about Ferrari. I can't remember, but a lot better than what most people would have thought for Red Bull at Russia. Very impressive, I thought. It was quite a bit of a shame that they took the engine penalties here because who knows, they could have been in the mix this weekend if something had happened, but with the dirty air and that, it's quite hard to overtake a top car. So that, that for me, makes Hamilton's move on Vettel even better. But for Red Bull, a terrific performance by Max. 10, 10 overtakes in three laps. That's, that's absolute madness from him. It was a perfect drive that he, for him, he managed those soft tyres so well. I remember there was a super slow-mo and his tyres looked absolutely perfect. No damage to them at all. So it shows you just how good Max is on his tyres. And for Mr. Ricardo, well, a good weekend for him because the West Coast Eagle, his AFL team won the grand final. And I'm sure some people would have seen the pictures of him celebrating in the paddock, which was quite funny because it's kind of how I'm usually reacting to the games as well with his race pace though it was quite disappointing that he picked up that front wing damage on lap one out of turn eight he said when he was having a look at van dorn because otherwise he could have charged through the field a lot quicker and perhaps been in some similar position that max was so that was quite disappointing but at the end of the day the best red bull could have hoped for this weekend right now let's go on to the midfield and first off mclaren who had Basically, one of their worst weekends of 2018. So, so poor. It was expected, but it's still not good enough. Niv, do you have anything to say about McLaren's poor performance? Nothing too much, but certainly their worst performance of the season, except for France. So, so poor this weekend. And hopefully next season they can be a little bit better than this because it is really such a shame to see such a great team like McLaren down in the dump, struggling like this. Next up is Renault, who did not have a good weekend in Sochi. No real surprise because this track was never going to suit their car, but still, compared to rivals Haas, not good enough at all. They did start the race on the favoured soft compound tyre, but it just, it didn't work out for them. Nico Hülkenberg, when he pitted at the end of the race, he didn't have really any pace at all. And Carlos Sainz, you know, shame for him because he did suffer damage to his car uh, from a Williams at turn two on the first lap. So disappointing, but, you know, that's the way it is for Renault Nib. Going forward, do you see the Renault car actually improving for the last five races? Or do you think this is just where their car is? I honestly think at the moment this is where their car is. I think both Force India and Haas are better than them at this stage of the season. At this stage of the season, most of the midfield teams would have stopped developing the car. 
the last little upgrades would have come at Singapore. So I think this is legitimately where Renault are. It's certainly obviously not their strongest race track that they that they're going to be at for the next five races, but still very disappointing from the last few races from Renault. And hopefully they can improve next season. From my point of view, they're definitely on the right strategy at the start of the race being on the soft tire. The soft tire was the best tire by quite a mile around here this weekend. Hulkenberg just couldn't get enough of a gap to uh, Magnussen to stay ahead of him when he could pit. And then after that, the ultra soft just destroyed itself because that's what it did in the race. The left front was absolutely struggling with on those tyres. And for science, quite a bit of a disappointment with Sorotkin running into the back of him into turn two. And then he was said he was losing a second a lap from side pod and floor damage. So a very poor weekend for Renault in terms of the championship. Next up is Force India, who I guess had a good race with a double points finish for Ocon and Perez, but they were, for the entire race, stuck behind the hearts of Kevin Magnussen, and they just could not get past. They tried everything to do that, but they couldn't. The dirty air was too much for Ocon and Perez. Nib for Force India, I guess, a good race. Yeah, definitely a good race for Force India. It's such a shame that they couldn't get past Magnussen, even though they were quite comfortably quicker than Magnus and just the dirty air once again was affecting that. They managed their drivers very well throughout the race, I must say, letting Ocon have a good chance at trying to get Magnus and then letting Perez through and letting him have a chance at Magnus and then they ultimately let Ocon back through. So kudos to Force India for that. But yeah, a very solid weekend for Force India. And ever since they come back as Racing Point Force India, they've been superb and very. there has to be a lot of credit that goes to them. Now we go on to Williams, who were basically as slow as we usually expect. Do you have anything to add to that, Nib? Not too much. I must say, Sergei Sorokin put an absolute banging qualifying lap and he said that the lap which he spun on was like the best lap he would he had ever done up until that point. So it would have been good to see if he'd got himself ahead of Alonso with that lap or not, because he was about eight tenths ahead of Stroll in Q1. So a bit of credit credit got to go to Sorokin there, but then he crashed into the back of science at turn one. So all that good work was undone very shortly. And then there were kind of nowhere like McLaren during the race, so there's not too much to talk about with them. Next up is Toro Rosso, who with both cars in the race had brake failures. Such a shame because Toro Rosso might have got, maybe not points, but a decent race result. But going forward into, because Honda is now such a big part of the Toro Rosso team, the next race in Suzuka is basically their home race. And Nib, with the new power unit that was tested on Friday, I think Toro Rosso are in for a very good, I guess you could call, home race. Yeah, definitely. The new power unit on Friday looked very, very positive and made me very sad that the Ricardo is leaving Red Bull and going to Renault. Um, so they should have a very strong weekend at Suzuka, hopefully. I don't know. The jury's still out on whether or not their car, their chassis and their aero is actually that good. So the first sector will be quite interesting to see their times compared to the rest of the midfield, but... In sector two and sector three, which is just pretty much two long straights, they should be comfortably ahead of the rest of the midfield, especially the Renault-powered cars. So I'd expect a very strong weekend from them at Japan. But in terms of this race weekend, yeah, I didn't really expect anything else from them. It was very, very odd, their brake issues, where the pedal just went to the floor in the end. Very odd issue for both drivers to have that on like the exact same lap and for it to be fine the whole weekend up until the race. It was very odd. So a bit of a disappointing weekend for Toro Rosso, but certainly lots to look forward to next weekend at Suzuka. Next up is Haas, who in terms of race pace were not that quick at all. Their tie wear is so poor right now in Singapore. 
I thought it was bad, but here especially, it was so, so bad, especially with Roman Grosjean, who was going so slowly when he entered the pits. I actually thought he had a problem because he was struggling that much on the tyres. Magnussen, I guess, did well to finish in P8, but Nib, they have to improve the tyre wear because that is a massive issue. Yeah, the tyre wear for supposedly the best two midfield teams is absolutely shocking. And it was quite comical seeing Grosjean struggle that much coming into the pits. Although, I must say, K-Mag did a terrific job this weekend. Qualifying fifth was was a fantastic result when it looked like both Force Indies and Leclerc were faster than him in qualifying. So it was a great job by Magnussen, as usual. And then Grosjean, once again, had a poor weekend for me. Just not as quick as Magnussen. When usually Grosjean is such a great qualifier, but he was very poor this weekend and deserved to kind of finish where he did. But a great result by Magnussen. And once again, if it wasn't for Magnussen this season, Haas would certainly be in fifth in the championship. And finally is Sauber, who was so quick this weekend, especially with the Ferrari driver for 2019, Charles Leclerc. What a performance for me, driver of the day, and arguably one of, at least, the drivers of the weekend. Niv, I know you're a massive fan of Leclerc. This performance surely shows that he is ready to drive for Ferrari. Yeah, there's no doubt after this performance this weekend that he is ready for Ferrari. For me, his best weekend so far in Formula 1. Great qualifying. And an even better race, that overtake on Magnussen. Wow, what a, what a move. That's something Alonso would do. I'm, I'm not saying he's Alonso. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting ahead, ahead of myself there. But that was a fantastic move. And especially on Kevin Magnussen, because who knows what he's going to do sometimes. And in his uh, post-race interview, he said that he actually had a good start for like the first time this season. So... If he, if he can get his starts nailed, then who knows what this guy can truly, truly do. Because as an Australian, I certainly know what people having bad starts is like. Because Mark Webber would always forget to just go off the line. So hopefully he can get his starts nailed down next year. But yeah, wow. What a weekend for Leclerc. Comprehensively beating Ericsson all weekend and finishing 40 to 50 seconds of, ahead of him. In the race, you know, Ericsson has done a good job this season, but there's been some races where you just go, wow, this Leclerc guy is very special, and this was another one of those weekends. Right now, guys, we're going to slightly look at what is going to happen at Suzuka. Now, at the top, I think quite clearly Mercedes are going to have the fastest car ahead of Ferrari and Red Bull. In the midfield, I think it's going to be similar to this weekend. I think Haas, Force India, and Sauber will be very fast, but also Toro Rosso, meaning that the great teams of McLaren, Renault and Williams, I think, are going to be maybe nearer the back. That is so sad. But Nib, going into Suzuka, who do you think right now is going to take pole or win the race? I'm going uh, Hamilton for pole and Hamilton to win the Grand Prix. I'll be very much echoing your thoughts there. For me, um, the top three in the race will be Hamilton, Bottas, and then Vettel. I, I see Mercedes domination again this weekend. It's a Mercedes track. The first sector suits their car down to the T, and then the rest of the track is long straights, which, which also suits Mercedes. So it's the perfect Mercedes track, and I don't see them really being challenged by anyone else. It'll be interesting to see where Red Bull are this weekend. But ultimately, the two long straights will be a massive hindrance to them as the Renault power engine is not very good compared to the Ferrari and the Mercedes. So I think they'll be in fifth and sixth, the Red Bulls. And then for the rest of the field, I think it will be Force India, Haas, Leclerc, and then probably Toro Rosso, and then Renault, uh, Ericsson. And then and then McLaren and Williams, which is oh, just so depressing once again. But yeah, it should be a weekend dominated by Mercedes. And 
there is a potential for rain with some rain from one of the, from a typhoon. So we might see some rain this weekend. And now, guys, we'll move on to some questions. The first one is from Stella, which is, what are our predictions for the last seat at Toro Rosso? I think it will be Pascal Verlein because he is, as Helmut Marko said, on the list of drivers that could be driving for Toro Rosso in 2019. Marco also came out and said that the only way Hartley really can keep his seat at Toro Rosso is to beat Gasly in the last five races. Let's be honest, guys. He's not going to. Hartley, compared to Gasly, has been quite poor. So I think it's going to be Verline. Nib, do you think Verline as well? Or could it be someone else? Yeah, I also think it will be Pascal Verline. Um, Helmut Marco said this weekend that he's on the short list. And I, yeah, I fully expect him to be the driver at Toro Rosso. The next one is from Tibor, who asks, can Vettel win the World Drivers' Championship? No, I don't think he can. I think it's over now because I think, as Nib said earlier, Hamilton has to retire twice and Vettel has to win those two races for, you know, it to be level again in the World Championship. So, no, I, I don't think Vettel has a chance anymore. He also asks, what is our prediction for the four senior driver lineup? He says Stroll and Perez. I agree. I think Stroll absolutely will be in that team. It's sad that Ocon, it looks like it's not going to be at four senior, but, you know, money, unfortunately, is more important um, for four senior, I guess. Nib, do you think it'll be Stroll and Perez? Yeah, I think it's public kind of knowledge now that it will be Stroll and Perez at Racing Point Four Cindy next season. And the last one is from Stella who asks, who is the best driver to not be in F1 right now in every tier of racing? For me, even though he had a full racing career in F1, I'd have to say Jensen Button because he won a world championship, was at his prime very, very good. So I'd have to say Jensen Button. Nib, who are you going with? Uh, for me, it has to be Sebastian Buemi. He's been absolutely brilliant in the World Endurance Championship for Toyota ever since he left F1 back in 2010 now when he was at Toro Rossa. And I think he actually could be a good driver in Formula 1. He was never really given the proper opportunity when he was teammates with Bordet. So for me, it's Buemi. Obviously, Jensen's very, very, very close second. Just blame me because he actually didn't have a proper career in Formula 1, whereas Jensen did. So for that reason, I'd go blame me. But guys, that's it for this podcast as we now head into Suzuka Nib. Hopefully that race is maybe not as good as Russia because even though this race was good in terms of entertainment, it still wasn't great. Hopefully we get a good Grand Prix. Yeah, hopefully it's one of the better Japanese Grand Prix that we've seen in the last few years. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back on Thursday with a preview for the race in Suzuka. And as well, don't forget to join our Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of what we discussed in this podcast. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.